So Bitcoin was the first cryptocurrency. It came out in 2008. Uh, the software re was released in 2009 by this mysterious figure uh, named Satoshi Nakamoto, and we have no idea who he, she, or they are. Uh, still mysterious. This person dropped Bitcoin on the internet and then disappeared. And what it is, is it's a way of making digital payments without a bank or a government or any other institution in the middle. There is no one who controls Bitcoin. There is no CEO. There is no company that mostly manages it. It's completely open. Uh, it's open source software, but it's also an open network. And that means that anyone anyone can join and become a part of it. So you spend by transferring Bitcoin to someone, and you get paid when someone transfers Bitcoin to you. And behind all of this is this data structure called the Bitcoin blockchain. It's just a list of all of the transactions that have happened in the system. And this data structure is being maintained by thousands of network computers around the world. And that's what I found so exciting about it. It's actually the world's largest consensus protocol. So the blockchain is the data center, is the data structure behind Bitcoin. You have probably heard a lot about it, and let's just get this out of the way. There is a tremendous amount of hype in this space. There are probably a lot of Dogbert-like people who might be trying to convince you to buy this technology and to buy whatever product that they're selling. So what's the deal? Is this space totally overhyped, or is it the best thing since the internet? Well. I think it can, it can be a little bit of both. So first, let's get some terms out of the way, OK? So when you hear the term private blockchain, what people are actually talking about is a database with cryptographic signatures, OK? When you hear the term permissioned blockchain, what people are talking about is a database with cryptographic signatures that's run by many organizations at the same time. So I think the first one is incredibly boring. Uh, we all know how to make databases pretty well. They run pretty efficiently. Uh, they can serve millions of queries per second. Uh, databases are doing just fine. And adding cryptographic signatures doesn't really seem like it changes much. The second thing is a little bit more interesting. Because even though we've known technically how to do this for a very long time, I haven't really seen it in practice. We don't really see multiple organizations coming together to work on the same core data. 